Howdy folks and welcome to this bonus video where as promised I will show you this Suburban 2500 2003. Uh, I, this is going to be the review I wish I had because a lot of reviews online I, I found they, they don't really show the third row, they don't really show the, the cargo space, they don't really describe how it is to drive. Uh, I will try to put everything I found out about this uh, truck in this review because as you know I bought it at auction on cars and bids and I drove it from California back to San Antonio, Texas. So you know I got to be very uh, close and personal with this truck for 48 hours as we drove the 1800 miles or so down the road. So uh, this one like I said I bought on cars and bids. Uh, it is what I think is the most desirable of configuration. So like I said, this is the Suburban 2500. It is very lightly modified and I will try to do my best to point out uh, the different modifications. But what I like about this one, it is four wheel drive. It has the 8.1 liter V8, which is the most powerful option. It has the 410 differential wheel, which allows the most towing. And uh, it, it's basically fully loaded. It has everything but the sunroof. It, it's the only option that I would have like to have but it doesn't have it and also uh, if you come to the back it has the barn doors and i absolutely love the barn doors i think they are they are gorgeous for people who don't know uh, it allows you to just open half of your uh, trunk space area and this is so good because when we load up the, the dogs you know it's a smaller bottleneck uh, for for us to manage them in and out you know because if you open the whole tailgate then they, they, they try to get away from you and uh, it's not very good so the only reason really to buy such a vehicle is if you want to transport a lot of people so more than four or five people and uh, if you want to tow so this configuration with the 8.1 liter v8 plus the 410 differential you have to be careful people out there because a lot of people assume that every Suburban 2500 can tow 12,000 pounds. You need the combination of the engine uh, and uh, the differential and not having quadra steer as well. So just be careful, uh, make sure you check the hitch at the back. It has to say 12,000 pounds. Not all of them can tow 12,000 pounds. So I keep talking about the, the Suburban 2500, but there, is, there was also uh, a vehicle at the time, uh, the Ford Excursion. So the Ford Excursion was sold from 2000 to 2005 and it was the Ford equivalent to the Suburban 2500. Uh, so basically uh, a big SUV with a, on a heavy duty frame with a heavy duty engine. And um, the thing with the Ford Excursion, we're going to talk more about it when we get to the interior, the Ford Excursion, even with the diesel or the V10 engine, can only tow 11,000 pounds. It's only rated for 11,000 pounds. So if you want to tow a lot, the Suburban 2500 is best in class. It is to this day still the full-size SUV that can tow the most. So here is that. All right, uh, let's climb inside. Uh, let's see Let's see more about this, uh, this car. So you can see how big it is. Uh, look at the size of this window. I don't... I'm not looking forward for it to be cracked in any way because I think that window alone is super expensive. It's basically a windshield in any other car, <laughs> but it's uh, you have two on the side of the car. Um, so, so this car is huge and you have to think that this was in 2003. Now cars have gotten bigger. Uh, when that car came out in 2003, he, it must have been huge for people <laughs> because the new Yukon XL is only, uh, I, I, I think, six or eight inches longer so the modern version of the Suburban is barely, barely a few inches bigger than this one. All right, uh, this one in particular has uh, aftermarket uh, mirrors. Uh, they are pretty good for towing. One thing that I wish it came with, and maybe some trims did, but mine did not, are side steps because it's pretty hard to climb. It's, it's not pretty hard, you know, but uh, you kind of have to jump your way in <laughs> inside this car and um, uh, it's fine, for example, if you are from the back seats, because you have those handles over here, so you just climb your way forward, uh, not as a driver. As a driver, you're expected to, I don't know, I guess use the steering wheel to climb, but I don't like to use the steering wheel because, you know, you, you put some weight on the, on the corner and stuff. So, yeah, one thing I don't really like, and I, I think in the future I will, I will put some side steps. So this one is the Suburban, uh, but at the same time, General Motors, so they have the brand Chevrolet and they have GMC. 
And uh, th so they had the Suburban and they had the Yukon XL. The Yukon XL was also available in the 2500 configuration with the same engine, same differential, same four wheel drive, all of that, except it was a different styling. And I believe some of the options uh, were different. So for example, uh, the Yukon XL, I think, I believe in some trims had a rear heated seats. Uh, this one does not. But anyway, uh, the big thing, the big difference between the Suburban and the Yukon XL was the styling. And the thing that's pretty funny is that uh, the Suburban had the old school look and the Yukon XL had the slicker, more modern look. But I think looking at it now in 2022, let me know in the comments what you think, but I prefer the Suburban. The, the Yukon XL was supposed to be the exciting new thing, the top of the line, luxury GMC version, but I like the square body style look of the Suburban better and uh, that, that's why I, I was looking for a Suburban and not a Yukon XL. Again, let me know in the comments what you think. So as we make our way to the interior, um, in 2003, G uh, Chevrolet just improved the, the interior and it's really the big difference if you look at pictures of the uh, Ford Excursion. So I was looking at Ford Excursion because why not, you know, and uh, but the Suburban is just so much better, especially after 2003. Uh, things are less plasticky, things are more refined. Uh, if you look at pictures of the older Suburban, it's, it's kind of rough in there, but here, honestly, it, it looks pretty good and that was the big selling point. And I'll tell you what uh, convinced me getting the Suburban instead of the Excursion, and that, that's the third row seat. In the Excursion, the third row seat doesn't have headrest and uh, I don't know, that last bench seat, it really looks in the excursion like an afterthought. It looked like, oh, we have a ton of space, let's just put a third row seat. The Suburban, really, uh, it feels like they, they took the luxury of the Suburban and they put it on a frame of a heavy-duty pickup truck. The excursion, they just went the other route. They took the chassis of the heavy-duty pickup truck and they just decided to close it up to make an SUV out of it and then they, they put a third row seat. It, it's not as refined in my opinion, but again, let me know what you think. Do you have an excursion? Do you have a Suburban 2500? Um, here I have my Suburban 2500. And like I said, this one is basically fully loaded. Of course, this is an aftermarket brake controller for the trailer. This is not factory, but basically you have everything you could ask for. You have memory seat, you have heated seats, you have uh, automatic headlights, you have cruise control, even though it's, uh, it's very hidden. At first, I thought this car didn't have cruise control just because the controls are very weird, but, but it does have it. It has dual uh, AC zone in the front, and then you have a rear AC control uh, for the rear. You have your home link. Basically, everything. So, of course, this unit specifically has an aftermarket radio with a backup camera. And by the way, the, the backup camera is very, very welcome for such a large vehicle. Um, the nice thing, though, that I would say is that uh, from the factory, it has a double den space. So it's very easy to put a full size touch screen like this one. Uh, you know, you don't have to have those folding units or stuff like that. Like the, the, the car will pretty much accommodate a brand new aftermarket modern stereo. Other than that, one thing I really like, and it's it's kind of silly, uh, but I find that out during the trip back, is those uh, sun visor type of thing. So this one can extend in the back, most cars do that, but then you have this double one. And this is super cool, especially here in the Texas Hill Country, where you, know, you have those twisty roads, and so when you have the sun in your face, I feel like when you're driving, you're constantly shifting here as the vehicle turns left and right in the curve. But in this car, you just have to do that, and then you're completely shielded. And that, that's a pretty nice touch. Uh, in terms of visibility, this is pretty good. Uh, what I like with those old cars is that in modern cars, they tend to put the airbag you know, in the sides here. Uh, in this case, the side airbag is in the seat and you have a lot of visibility above your shoulder. I feel like in modern cars, if you look above your shoulder, all you see is that B-pillar. Uh, here, you just see a lot of what's going on around you, again, which is nice because you're basically driving a small bus. Uh, in terms of visibility, though, the problem are the barn doors. So, the barn doors, they look very cool. I really like them. I don't regret buying that option, but you have the middle of the barn door in your field of vision. Let me show you what it looks like. So as a driver, you're cruising down the highway and you look behind you to see if somebody wants to pass and then you see this big uh, division, you know, kind of like if you're driving a van, for example. And uh, it's hard to describe because it doesn't look that big on camera, 
but if you're driving on the highway and somebody is at a reasonable distance behind you, their car is almost 100% blocked off by this divider uh, pillar thing. And uh, it's pretty weird because sometimes so I was driving back and I thought that nobody was behind me and then I was surprised because I saw them on the side mirror. So it's definitely getting some used to it, uh, but it's not that bad, but it's there honestly and it's something I didn't expect before getting the car. So there is one thing that's kind of weird with this car. Obviously it was uh, manufactured in 2003, I mean 2002 for the 2003 year, but there is a slot here that is perfect for a cell phone. Phones at the time would not even fit in between here, but in modern times, uh, I think it looks pretty good and it's pretty nice to have a, a secure location for your phone because in most cars, you know, you have to put it here, but then it would fly out in case you, you're braking too hard. Uh, here, it's pretty nice. You just put your phone here. Another thing I like, so this uh, trim has the Bose speakers. They are not aftermarket in my vehicle and they sound great. And I asked my wife, I'm very picky with the sounding cars. Uh, I really don't like most cars because of the sound system. I think they are too bassy. I think the manufacturer are trying to, to get vibrations out of it more than quality of sounds. In this car, you have speakers pretty much everywhere. It is, it is very, very good. Also very comfortable are those seats. Uh, so this trim in particular, this uh, car in particular has the captain's chair in the front and in the back. You get your own armrest. Uh, that's nice because a lot of cars, so the truck that I had, uh, GMC Sierra, uh, you would use the central console as the armor. So the central console was, was wider, uh, but it meant that if you wanted to access it, you had to ask the passenger to leave their arm so you would access the console. Here, everybody has their individual uh, armrest, and I think that's pretty nice. The seats are very, very comfortable. And so there was a generation of the Suburban uh, 2500 after that, but the seats were were thinner and people online said that they are not as comfortable. I, I'll tell you, those seats, I took them out because I wanted to vacuum the carpet uh, after I got the car. They are heavy. They, you have a lot of foam and padding in there. And like I said, I drove this car um, 1800 miles for eight, 48 hours down from California and I never had any back issue. Of course, you have Lombard supports. It is very, very comfortable vehicle. You can drive coast to coast and in total luxury in this car while throwing 12,000 pounds. This is really why people uh, buy those trucks. Onto the back seat, like I said, captain's chair. Those are aftermarket uh, floor mats. So don't expect those uh, on your Suburban, but you have a nice cushy uh, carpet underneath. But yeah, so I, I am 5'10". I like to pretend I'm 5'11", but I'm 5'10". And I have a lot of space up and down. Um, and on the side, I mean, especially with the captain's chair. So like I said, everybody got their armrest. Uh, you have space, you know, you're not bumping into each other. And I think even in the bench seat configuration, you could have an adult sitting here and they, they would not be, you know, competing for space too much. So back here, you have some option over here. Uh, you can control the radio for the, well, <laughs> the DVD system, because this car was the total luxury of 2003. And in 2003, total luxury meant DVD player. <laughs> so, so I don't ever intend to use that, uh, but it's there. Uh, it looks, it looks pretty goofy, uh, but yeah, you have your output for passengers to listen to the DVD in the back. Uh, here you have some climate control uh, options, but the driver can always override. So for example, your kids cannot mess up uh, with this. I mean, the driver is, is completely in control. Then on to the third row. So to access the third row, super simple. You just leave that and you press and then you have access to, to the third row. So the, like I said, I am 5'10". And the third row was the biggest question for me. The question I had was, can, can an adult fit in there? And uh, well, let me show you. I think the answer is yes, honestly. So maybe not three adults, even though you have three seat belts back there, but uh, you can fit an adult in there. I have a lot of space here for armrest. You don't have armrest in the middle. I wish this section would just fold out and it would be great. You have Tiny bit less headroom, though you can see that I still have a few inches uh, left to spare. And uh, I mean, I think it's pretty good here. You have 
less space in uh, the back seats for sure. So maybe if you are six feet tall, it's gonna be an issue for you. But at, at 5'10", and uh, it, it's a lot of space. So, so if you plan on putting your kids back there, uh, they're already gonna have well enough space. And so to get out, you just press this lever. By the way, I wanna show you this. The middle seat scope holders are actually here. So now we're gonna see uh, the big feature because this car can transport, well, seven people in my configuration, eight people if you have the bench seats, but it can do that while still have excellent cargo area. So let's go in the trunk now. I love those barn doors. Okay, so it's gonna be hard to show what type of space you have, but let me go in the trunk. So this is me in the trunk, all right? I could almost sleep here. This is huge and I still retain all the space for seven to eight people. Uh, and the nice thing about this car is that you can get even more cargo space because it is very easy to remove that third row seat. Let me show you how that works. So you have a lot of space back there. So I, I advise having a friend to, to take that, uh, that third row out. It's, uh, you can be by yourself to unhook it, but then you know to, to put somewhere. Also, you have to have some space because <laughs> the third row bench is literally the size of a small bedroom couch. So you have to put it somewhere. If you have a garage, something you know nice and dry to store it, that's nice. I got my uh, WeatherTech uh, mat over here which is good because uh, when we take the third row out we plan on uh, taking the dogs in there but you can see that you basically have a carpeted full-size truck bed in here <laughs> uh, this is super nice a lot a lot of space and uh, i want to show you how much space there is so we have four dogs right let's try to bring all four dogs inside and see what kind of room they get let's go archer come on archer come on Yeah. <laughs> of course some of your dogs might require some help you know especially the hip lady over there and this guy who i just had to chase across the property because he would not come in so you can see they all fit very well they don't want to stay because but yeah they have a lot of room back there and uh, actually we took them on a ride and uh, they can all lay down they do not compete for space. This is pretty good for them. Let me show you what kind of space they have from the third row. So this is the view from, from the third row and you can really appreciate the kind of space they have. This is good for them back there. Plus they have the air conditioning vents here. So this is really the ultimate vehicle if you plan on transporting your dogs. Dogs plus four people. Because we still retain all the space back here minus the third row that we just removed. So now let's talk about driving this uh, Suburban 2500. It drives like a U-Haul truck, honestly. It, uh, it's, I mean, the, these engine, they, they put them on motorhomes, uh, they put them on the heavy duty pickup trucks, they put them, of course, on this uh, Suburban 2500. It drives like a big truck and um, it is no race car. So it is surprisingly quick uh, to accelerate and it makes, makes a lot of fun noise. But it is there, you have 8.1 liter. I did not even floor it over here. And I, I'm, I'm already flying on this uh, small road. It is quick. So we are not gonna do towing in this video, but I have no problem imagining towing a big rig with this, uh, with this vehicle. The engine is very, very responsive. And uh, yeah, that's why people bought them. So 8.1 liter, and this is a four speed automatic transmission. And I was worried about this. Uh, before I bought it because I drove some old 90s car, four-speed transmission car, and uh, it was kind of rough because it seemed like when passing, the car was e either revving way too high or it didn't have any power in the top gear. Well, with this car, I was 
very, very surprised because you have to think like this engine is very, very torquey. And so when I was passing so many trucks on the highway, for example, I would uh, put my foot on the accelerator and on any vehicle, you would expect a downshift. Well, on this car, it does not always downshift. Sometimes it stays in fourth gear and there is just so much torque that from this 1200 RPM that you were at, it will just rev up from the fourth gear. It doesn't need to downshift to get more torque. That's how strong that engine is. It's almost counterintuitive to put your foot almost to the floor and don't hear a downshifting. This is kind of weird. It kind of creeped me out at first, but I mean, I was passing those trucks with no problem. So of course, if you really put it to the floor and you're not too high uh, speed already, it will downshift to third gear and then you get even more torque. But uh, what I'm saying is that uh, that four speed transmission is really not an issue on highway driving. Now let's talk about city driving, which is basically the thing you don't want to do in this car. So coming to a stop now, you, I press the accelerator to get to 15, almost 20 miles per hour. It has to go to 2000 RPM. It has to launch, you know, it's, it's a big vehicle still. And the efficiency in the city in terms of fuel economy is terrible. So let's talk, let's get that out of the way. I drove from California, so only highway, and I got with this car, I have the all-terrain tire, I have the 410 differential, I was not trying to do 65 miles an hour, you know, I was uh, at the speed limit, and the speed limit in West Texas is 80 miles an hour, so it's, you know, this truck can get to 80 miles an hour with no problem, but it will use a lot of fuel. In my case, I was getting 11.5 mpg, which is really not good, but now consider this. Of course, towing you would get even less, but you're towing, you're transporting six people and two dogs, let's say, in complete luxury. If you divide those MPG, this fuel consumption by six, because you're transporting six people plus all the rig that you have, then it's really not that bad, honestly. Uh, and that's the thing with the excursion. So the excursion, the Ford excursion has a diesel option. And I have no doubt that the diesel can get better fuel economy, maybe on the highway, but especially towing. But here is the thing, where I live in Texas, diesel is 25 to 30% more expensive than gas. So if you look at the price per mile, the price of fuel per mile, it's, it's almost better to get this 8.1 liter gas engine um, because it will be cheaper in the end. And also you don't have to worry about the diesel engine tire. You don't have to worry about the, the uh, emission system on the diesel. You don't have to worry about, about a more complex engine to maintain, about more oil, more oil of that. And so that's why I'm happy to have this gas engine. And it doesn't really matter to me because it's not like a, I won't be towing a lot cross country or stuff like that. So if you buy this car, it's for transporting a lot of people and towing. So this car has dual purpose. I would say the Suburban 2500 is better than the Excursion if you plan on transporting people more than you plan on towing. Because the full Excursion with the diesel will have most likely better fuel economy. But again, it's not as nice of a vehicle, guys. So, okay, now let's talk about the ride. The ride is so comfortable and it's also a big difference with the Ford Excursion from what I've seen. It drives like a Cadillac Escalade. It drives like a Suburban, especially this trim has the auto ride suspension. So it's electronically controlled shocks absorption in the front. It is crazy how you go on bumps and you don't have a lot of rebound from this car. It absorbs the bump and then just go away smoothly, but it's not a boat still. Uh, this suspension is surprisingly very tight for such an old vehicle. And it's very, very comfortable. It's, uh, I mean, it is, you have, you have body roll. I mean, it's a large vehicle and it's, uh, it's not the tightest vehicle around the racetrack, but guess what guys, this is not a racetrack. This car is meant to go on American highways that are straight. It, it's not meant to turn and corner very fast. It's meant to transport six people and two dogs plus a 12,000 pound RV across country. That's what this vehicle is meant for. And for that job, it is tremendously comfortable. In terms of road noise, the, this is pretty great. I think it rivals uh, newer cars. I, I, I've driven uh, the new Yukon. I've had a GMC Sierra uh, 2020. I know what a modern car can offer in terms of luxury and road noise and harshness and all of that. This is very good. Uh, the road noise uh, traveling at 80 miles an hour, even with those all terrain tires, that was good. I was not, you know, at the end of the day, I was not looking forward to get out of the car because I could not bear the droning noise or anything like that. 